Transferring information from one system to another can be tricky. This video provides information on how to run imports, understanding the options when importing, and reading import status information. Prepare your file for import. Before you import, you need to make sure your data is clean. For instance, this spreadsheet is an example of messy data, whereas this one is not. So what is clean data? First of all, it means all related information is in the same column. First name, last name, email address, etc. You also need to have unique IDs in your file. This is how the database knows if a person is new or if the signup is the same person as one already in the database. NationBuilder accepts a variety of unique IDs, the most common one being email addresses. You can learn more about unique IDs within our how-to documents at support.nationbuilder.com. Finally, make sure your Excel file doesn't have any formulas, colors, flags, comments, conditional formatting, hard returns, or commas. Make sure your import file is formatted as a UTF-8 standardized comma-separated file, aka a CSV. Accept any warning that not all Excel features are supported by the current file type. We also suggest that you take a snapshot of your nation before running imports. This allows your nation to be easily restored to its previous state if you change your mind or if something goes wrong. Step 1. Upload your file. Navigate to People and click on Imports. Click Choose File and select the file from your computer. Click Upload CSV File. Step 2. Map Fields. Mapping fields means telling your nation what type of data can be found in each field, or column. You must map to fields available for import. To start mapping, select the data field from the drop-down menu at the top of each column. Keep in mind, different fields of the same name exist under different category headers, which produce different results. For example, there are a variety of address category choices, mailing, work, etc. Make sure that if you have an address with multiple lines, you're using address 1, 2, and three under the same heading. While mapping, you may see some error text. Don't fret. Every time fields are mapped, the system will validate the first row of data to confirm it looks correct. It is also validating for a unique ID. Once one is mapped, this text will not display. Checking the box next to Don't Import will tell the system the first row contains header information and the second row of data will be validated. Step three, customize your import. The third step is defining settings for the import. Several options appear on one-time imports. Fewer choices are included in other imports. First, decide whether to overwrite existing signup data. The unique ID imported with a record could connect it to an existing profile in your nation. Next, profiles always have a support status, which is supporter, non-supporter, or prospect. If the records being imported are people who have opted into communication, select supporters slash non-supporters. Any new profile created with an email address, mobile number, Facebook username or ID, or Twitter login ID will be labeled a supporter. Other profiles will be created as non-supporters. If the records being imported are people who have not opted into communication, select Prospects. When Prospects is selected, all profiles created will be labeled Prospects, including records with email address, mobile number, Facebook username ID, or Twitter login ID. Next, decide whether to show that each profile was added in the activity stream in the dashboard section on the person's profile. Sometimes this can be useful, other times it's just clutter. Tags are virtual sticky notes that you can attach to a person's profile to highlight certain criteria or characteristics. It's always recommended to add a tag to any import that may be updating data so you can filter for this group after the fact. If a tag or tag should be added to every record imported included in this text box, tags can have spaces. Including a comma separates one tag from another tag. Tags included in this text box will be appended to the tag list for each person added or updated by the import. If you check the box for bypass webhooks, no signal will be sent to the API regarding the import. Checking the box will prevent external apps or API-based integrations from updating based on the import. Once you click the Start Import button, the file is loaded into the import queue. A nation can import one file at a time. Until fields are mapped, you will not be able to press this button. Fields must be mapped, and a unique identifier must exist before the file can be imported. Status of Imports After clicking the Start Import button, a file is added to the import queue. The status displayed with that file will be queued for importing, but not started yet. Refresh to check. Once an import starts, the status will change to importing or working. Information available includes 
completion percentage for an in-progress import, number of records processed, total number of records to process, and estimated time until the import finishes. Once an import finishes, the status will look something like this. Source. Click on the name of the file and a copy of the imported CSV will download to your computer. Size. The size of the imported file. Added. Number of records added by the import. Clicking on the number takes you to a list of the records created by the import. Updated. Number of records updated by the import. As mentioned above, it's always recommended to add a tag to any import that may be updating data so you can filter for this group after the fact. The updated number will not be clickable. Errors. Number of errors detected in the import. Click on Download CSV to view the error file. The CSV error file will only contain the first two megabytes of errors. The last field in each record will contain the error logged. Time spent. Amount of time spent importing the file. Status. When the import finished in relative time or the current status of a queued or working import. Imported addresses can take two to six hours to geocode. This aspect of the import status can be reviewed under Settings, Database, Geocoding Services. You did it! Now you can access the data you imported in the People section.